If you want to look for the seeds of the gay liberation movement or the gay revolution, you can see seeds of it even in the 20s and 30s in America. But the Alfred Kinsey study in 1948 on the sexuality of the, of the human male, which, which said one in 10 is gay, and that put this much more before the consciousness of the people. And then there were famous novels that were written at that time that had gay characters. There was more talk about it. But still, it was more hidden. Still, if you were open homosexual at work, you could lose your job just for that. It was in the counterculture revolution of the 1960s that a great shift came. Someone said if you fell asleep in 1960 and woke up in the year 2000, you'd wake up to the divorce rate up two times, teen suicide up three times, uh, reported violent crime up four times, prison population up five times, people living together out of wedlock up six times, and people having kids out of wedlock up seven times. So, so what basically happened is you have this massive moral cultural shift, the sexual revolution, and in 1969 it exploded in the Stonewall riots where, where cross-dressing gay men and other gay men decided to fight back against the police. It was a violent assault. I mean, the police feared for their lives. This was the Stonewall Rebellion. That was the official beginning, June 1969, a day that is celebrated by the President of the United States, Barack Obama, to this day as an important day in American history. In his second inaugural speech, he talked about going from Seneca to Selma to Stonewall. So from women's rights at Seneca to black rights at Selma to now gay rights at Stonewall. Why have there been so many victories for gay activism? One is, it's coming to a time of great sexual anarchy. It's part of this larger moral vacuum. Two, people have bought into this as the new civil rights, so that they feel that gay is the new black. We don't want to do what we did before to blacks, to Native Americans. Gay is the new black. This is the new civil rights movement. A third thing is that the church has been weak. The church has not been a strong moral backbone and salt and light in the culture because of which there is moral and spiritual anarchy and even anarchy in terms of the meaning of family. And fourth is this, a gay man or woman doesn't go to a gay meeting once a week and think they've done their duty. Christians show up at a church service once a week and they've thought, we've done our duty. Maybe they've even given a little money. The whole goal is not going to church, but being the church. Well, in the gay activist movement, this is who they are. I don't mean they think about sex day and night, but this is a matter of their rights. This is a matter of their relationships. This is a matter of their place in the world. So they're not backing down. For us, it's just a peripheral issue. When this becomes a central issue for us, the tide will turn.